In this example, we want to take the limit of this function where s and t are real values uh, such that uh, x is approaching infinity. Okay, so again, here we're going to have to use the uh, conjugate, okay? And uh, if we notice, if we plug in infinity for x, okay, we end up getting infinity minus infinity. So uh, this is an indeterminate result, okay? So we do need to, uh, so we have to uh, rewrite this uh, function, okay? So we're going to do that by using the conjugate, okay? So we have the square root of x squared plus sx, okay? Minus the square root of x squared plus tx, okay? I'm going to put all this over 1. Okay, so we're going to multiply uh, the numerator by the conjugate of this expression that you see here. So this is going to get multiplied by x squared plus sx plus the square root of x squared plus tx. Okay, so we need to uh, multiply the denominator by the same expression. So x squared plus sx, square root of that plus the square root of x squared plus tx. All right. All right, so again, using uh, this property, okay, where we have a minus b times a plus b, okay, this is equal to a squared minus b squared, okay? All right, so we can apply that here, okay? where a is the square root of x squared plus sx, and b is the square root of x squared plus tx, okay? All right, so we're gonna end up getting uh, x squared plus sx, okay, minus x squared plus tx, okay? All right, and then all this is divided by the square root of x squared plus sx plus the square root of x squared plus tx, okay? All right, so simplifying this, okay, we're gonna get, um, let's see, let's do that down here. So simplifying this, we're gonna get x squared plus sx minus x squared minus tx all divided by the square root of x squared plus sx plus the square root of x squared plus tx. And so, uh, as you can see, the x squares cancel out. And we're left, so we're left with sx minus tx all divided by the square root of x squared plus sx plus the square root of x squared plus tx. Okay. All right. So now we take, uh, we can go ahead and take the limit of this as x approaches infinity. Okay. So what we want to do here, okay, same. Uh, same strategy that we did in the previous, ver uh, pre previous video. Uh, we want to divide by the, uh, we want to divide each term by the uh, uh, term with the highest degree. So in this case, um, we're looking in the denominator, we have x squared. Okay, so we're going to take and divide each of those, each of the terms by x squared. Okay, so we're going to have the limit as x approaches infinity of s over, okay, we have, sorry. Oh. So we have, starting in the denominator, okay, we have x squared over x squared plus sx over x squared plus square root of x squared over x squared plus 
tx over x squared. Okay, and because x squared is in the underneath the square root, it's underneath the radical. So when we take it outside the square root, we need to take the absolute value of that. So that's going to leave us with sx over the absolute value x minus tx all divided by the absolute value x. Okay. All right. So as x is approaching infinity, okay, um, we're going to get, okay, so we can simplify this a little more. Okay, so this is going to be sx over the absolute value x minus tx over the absolute value x, all divided by square root of 1 plus s over x plus the square root of 1 plus t over x. Okay, so again, as x approaches infinity, okay, because x is, so x is, okay, Right, x is approaching, it's going towards the right. So that means this, okay, this is going to be, okay, 1, all right, because x is approaching um, the, is a positive, in the positive direction. So we get a positive number over positive number. And same thing with this one, okay. And as x approaches infinity, this is going to go to 0, and so is this term. So that leaves us with, okay, we have, uh, so we have s times 1 minus t times 1 on top, okay, so we have s minus t. On the bottom here, we have square root 1 plus square root 1, so that's going to leave us with 2, okay. So this is our, uh, the solution to, uh, to our limit, okay, so the limit depends on s and t. Okay, so we did this by using the conjugate, and then we looked in the numerator for the, uh, I'm sorry, we looked in the denominator, looked for the term with the highest degree, and took that and divide by each term. Uh, keeping in mind that when you take out that term from the radical, you have to take the absolute value of it, okay? All right, and so over here, so this is a, uh, a graph of our function, so I just wanted to show you how the horizontal asymptote um, that we got here, which is one half of s minus t, how it relates to the function that we have. Okay, so in blue is the uh, in blue is the uh, the function that we're given, and this is the horizontal asymptote, uh, which is one half of s minus two. Okay, which is what you see here. Okay, so as we right, so this is what it looks like as we increase t, okay, so the function obviously will change, but the horizontal asymptote will change, okay. So you can see how it depends on t, and it also depends on s, okay. All right. Okay, so even if we go below the uh, x-axis, it's still, we still have the same, we still have the horizontal asymptote depending on s and t. Okay. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Okay. All right.